Spiders. I hate spiders. Welcome back to Miniature Journey, I'm Jay, and in today's episode, we're going to be painting up a couple of these guys, these goblin spider riders. They're, they're quite amazing. Apart from I don't like spiders, uh, we'll take that out of the equation. These came with the goblins we did in the last episode. I know we've been taken over by goblins, but the reason I've chosen... Uh, these models is because they think they're going to allow us to use dry brushing, which we haven't used yet, and wet blending. I think wet blending should work really nicely for these, as well as layering and highlighting like we've done in the last couple of videos. We're going to carry on using that, but we're adding dry brushing and highlighting to our resume, as it were. So sit back, relax, and let's see how it goes. I had a really good idea of what I wanted to do with the colour scheme on these. I wanted the legs to go from very dark up to really light on the joins. I wanted the joins to be quite prominent. So I've gone with quite a dark purple leading into a black at the tips of the legs. And then we're going to do quite a bright pink. And the fun thing about this was the wet blending. I really enjoyed blending the colours together. You've got to work quite quickly so the paint doesn't dry and it's almost like you're not using the palette you're mixing the paints on the model well that's how i did it as you can see here and it's really satisfying <laughs> you can just play around with it and just keep playing and moving the colors around until until you're happy with it it's, it's not a very tidy way of painting but it was very effective at the end when we do all the extra little details and tidy it up it really came together the two colours I'm using here are Warlord Purple and Squid Pink. So to start off with, I mixed part of the Warlord Purple with black just to get that really dark purple colour. Because Warlord Purple is very, very fuchsia pinky in your face. And I figured doing the entire model in that might be a bit much. So we added some black to it, made a much darker purple. And then we, we've used a combination of the three colours to build up to where we want to be. Uh, the squid pink I think I just mixed with the warlord purple and then later on we're going to use the squid pink for dry brushing which as I've said in previous videos is a, it is a way of painting I really enjoy. Here you can see me really enjoying that big butt of that spider and just blending those colours together and I just keep adding and adding and there's no right or wrong way of doing this. You you just keep going until you get the desired results. As you can see here, I just keep blending it all around, trying to get that smooth edge, adding a pop of uh, light color in the middle and then blending that out and adding another pop of light color and blending that out. And eventually you get this, this nice sort of blend where you're happy with it. I do like working on two separate models at the same time because you can sort of flip between them if you want one of them to sort of dry off a bit you can move on to the other one and here we're just adding that really really strong pop of pink uh, which i think these models needed we did go for quite a dark purple and i really wanted those joints and details to stand out so i think i went over like the joints and the detailing with the, per the, the bright pink quite a few times Another nice thing from working on two models is I've learnt from the first one to the second one. So if you see here on the first one, I did all the legs in one go, which is fine, but you have to work extremely quickly because if that paint starts to dry, you, you just don't get the blend that you want. Where with this model, I'm working on um, a pair of legs at a time. So do one pair of legs, then the next pair, then the next and the next. And it gave me that little bit more extra time to blend them. And I think I did get a better blend doing it that way. Moving on to the dry brushing. So as you can see here, we're just putting the pink on and then rubbing as much of it off as we want on a, a, a tissue. Trying it on our hand first to see how much paint's coming off. You need to sort of judge what you're looking for. I think wiping 90-95% of the paint off the brush does help and then we're just doing a very 
light dry brush. Not too light, but we're just going over the same areas over and over and over again. So it's just picking out those higher areas. We don't want to... We don't want to cover the spider in this pink. We just want to pick out those, those raised areas. And it's very satisfying just sitting there going over the same spot very lightly over and over again. And you can just see the paint the paint grip into those those higher areas and building up and just sort of making it pop a little bit. Doing the joints between the legs was actually easier than anticipated. It, your brush sort of follows naturally. The hardest bit is getting the tip of your brush in there. Once the tip of your brush is in there, it will follow that line perfectly. It's actually really straightforward. These models were really satisfying to paint. I've actually got a, I think I've got probably six or seven more of these and I'm definitely thinking I'll paint a few more up, maybe different colours, which will be odd. Maybe colours that sort of complement these colours, they work together because all animals aren't the same colour, you wouldn't have all the spiders the same colour. Just thinking aloud, as I do. I think the hardest thing that I found with these models was bringing out the detail on the body of the spider. The legs are actually quite straightforward and worked almost how I intended. Another reason for me choosing these models is I want to start doing basing. And I think these would be perfect for basing. We can do sort of a, a, a cave design maybe with a cliffy bit that the spiders can be climbing down. The issue is they're stuck to these bases. They were stuck to these bases when I got them and they're stuck well, really well. We need them to be on these bases. So after this video, once the models are finished, I'm going to attempt to take them off of these bases so we can put them on our new bases that we're going to build in a couple of episodes time. Here I am just working on the back of that spider trying to pick out the details. I didn't want to outline everything or colour it all in. I just wanted to get some sort of lighter pink highlights in there just to show off that design just to make it stand out a little bit. Now I'm coming in with another dry brush. We've gone for very light pink. I think I'm just using the squid pink here. Possibly squid pink with a tiny bit of white in it, maybe, but I don't think that's the case. And we're just running even lighter over the top of these. I just want to get almost like a highlight going on. And the highlight with the dry brush works really nicely on the legs. Again, it's all about building up those shades of the same colors just making the higher ridges stand out. It did work very nicely, but I wasn't over satisfied with it. So I do come in momentarily with a brush and just put some lines in some highlights, as you can see here. Or not here, I should say. Uh, this is where I'm doing the eyes. So we're gonna put a very dark green in there first. And then I'm going to build up to quite a bright green because I want the eyes to... It's a very dark... Imagine these in the cave. I want those eyes to stand out. I want you to see those eyes through the dark. So we're going to build up the green to a very bright green. At the moment, as I say, it's just dark green. And then we're going to come in here and put the highlights on the legs. And I, I'm still very much learning where to place highlights and how to place them. But I do think the highlights on these spiders brought them to life. It did add that extra, that extra bit that I was looking for. As you can see, I'm a bit heavy handed here, but not to worry. Just rub it off with your finger, bill of tissue, start again. You, don't, you can't spoil it unless you let it dry. Then you have to paint over it and, and fix it. But while it's still wet, it is fairly easy to wipe off. Now I'm just running my brush along the higher ridges 
of the the legs where i think we could probably use edge highlighting but i'm still not very good at that i'm, I'm learning still picking out a few sort of lighter areas on the back again on the bums i wanted to bring out some of that detail a little bit more so we use this very lighter color to show where the light's catching on the different raised areas Finally, I just wanted to bring those pincers, those giant pincers on the front of the spiders, sort of out of the color scheme. I wanted them to stand out like the eyes do, so you can really focus on the face of the spider. So I'm just using some brown as a base coat and then sort of wet blending that up into a lighter ivory color. I feel like this is a male and female spider because the one seems to have massive pincers, the other one smaller pincers. So in my head, they are male and female. Once I get this lighter color on, I just put a few of the original dark brown lines across it to try and make those blend in and make it feel more like teeth or, or ivory or something like that. I don't really know what a spider's teeth would be made out of, but that's what I'm going with. My brainwave for today were these things. These are just the, the, the caps off the um, nail varnish remover that I used to strip uh, the models. And I thought, oh, I'll just put a bit of blue tack on it. I've got myself a handle. Really good. This blue tack's not that great at holding the models though, as you've just seen. <laughs> so if you are gonna try this, get some decent blue tack. As in previous episodes, I've just done a base coat of all the colours on these goblins. And then we're going to build up from there. Rather than using goblin green, I actually used khaki. A khaki green, which worked really well. It almost gave it this sort of... I imagined them in caves and deep jungles so they wouldn't get much sun. And it almost gave him this, this sickly looking skin. And it works beautifully. Here I'm just adding some red and wet blending it in around the nose and the lips area. Just to make it feel like that's where the skin's at its finest. And normally when the skin's at its finest, you can, it's more pinky because of the blood underneath. I am presuming they have red blood. They might not have red blood. They might have a completely different color. But for this purpose, they've got red blood. The khaki worked really well with the dark the dark green I used for the base coat. It did need two to three coats to get a nice smooth finish, but it just, I, I have to admit, this is my new favorite color for goblins. Going forward, my goblins are gonna have khaki skin. Here I'm just wet blending the feathers in. I really wanted to tie that pinky purple from the spiders in with the goblins. So I start off with that that uh, warlord purple and then we wet blend the feathers down at the points to the squid pink and this took a little bit of time again i did all the feathers at once here which made my life more difficult on the second model i i did do i you think i would have learned from the spiders but no no um takes a couple of times for it to sink in so yeah i'm just working the two colors i sort of flip and change between the dark and the light because sometimes the light's too much or the dark's too much and we're just trying to get a nice transition across the board. They are really nice models, considering the spiders are sort of the, the prime thing in this model. The goblins are actually really nicely made. I love the backs on them and you can see those, sh those shoulder blades and that, really nice. The one does have a weird bit on his back, which I presumed was armor, but there wasn't anything connecting it to it. So I've, I've sort of gone with armor, but not entirely sure that's accurate. Here I'm just trying to bring some detail into the feathers with a wash. My, my old nemesis, the wash.
I've actually just tried washes again. In the last video, you may have seen it go terribly wrong. I ended up with a chalky effect. Uh, on these models, I'm using an umber wash, uh, which I just wanted to pick out the details in the feather without being too too dark. An umber wash, wash seemed to work really nicely for that. The reason for the chalkiness I find out in the last episode is where the wash is pooling on it, pooling in one spot. Um, so. We need to put the wash where we want it, but not allow it to pull on any flat surfaces or anything like that, because then it will end up with a chalky effect. And we don't want that. Final few details going in now. We just need to do all like the band. These are very beautiful models. We just need to do the bands around the legs and the arms. And there's lots of little details that take a fair bit of time, just picking out each individual bit. And then, of course, trying to get that, that tiny little dot in there for the eyes. And I was trying to be clever and, and put a tiny red dot and then an even tinier um, uh, ivory dot in there to try and add some reflection to the eye. And there we have it, two finished beautiful spiders. I love the pink and purple. It, I sort of sat there and went, what two colors don't I use? And it was these. So I thought, why not? We'll use that on the spiders. What have I learned during this process? Because there's always something to learn. Uh, I've learned <laughs> I've learned that I don't like painting shields or weapons because I don't really know what to do with them. Uh, with these, I've sort of given it a stone effect on the weapons, which sort of works. I feel like looking at the weapons, they've been carved from stone. Shields, not happy with, not really sure how to do shields at this point. If you've got any tips, let me know in the comments below. If you've enjoyed this episode, hit that like button. And if you haven't done already, please subscribe. It does help the channel. And until next time, I'll see you again.